What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 54 update. This week, they added dynamic dropships, dropship beacons. They removed the eight-player limit. They also made some changes to the decentralization update and announced what companies are going to be hosting dedicated servers. Let's get into it, shall we? So Icarus Week 54 dynamic dropships. Icarus Week 54 update. No more eight-player limit and dropship beacons. Sessions can now support over eight players, and the dropship beacon will allow you to call your dropship anywhere this week they're changing the limits on the number of players who can join and play in a session after their decentralization update allowing you to share your icarus journey with more friends they're also introducing the newest tier 4 and workshop item the dropship beacon grenade which allows you to call your dropship to wherever you are on the map at any time finally they're making a range of fixes that were required since their decentralization update and introducing their preferred partners for dedicated servers so dynamic dropship landing zone. So since the beginning of Icarus, drops have been limited to eight players and only eight players. With decentralization, the limitation is gone. And with that limitation removed, they can now play around with the number of players who can engage on a prospect and where they can land. There's two different limits that's necessary to understand. You got prospect limit, which is the total number of players who have joined a prospect at any time during its existence and then you got session limit and that's the number of active players playing at any one time in a session the change to the prospect limit is as follows they now generate a location around the drop zone which means that the landing dropships is more dynamic and removes the eight person limit entirely which allows you to have many people join a session over its lifespan but the change to the session limit is as follows peer-to-peer -peer sessions will still have an eight player session limit so only eight people can be active at any time but on dedicated servers they'll be open up to more than eight players but at the risk of the server degradation as the session count fluctuates similar to other games in the genre so we actually have got a chance to check out some of the dynamic drop zone locations they are different locations now they just added extra spots in the drop zones so you could drop at different places now we also have the dropship beacon grenade and since they removed the restrictions on prospect limits it allowed for the newest feature the dropship beacon grenade there's two versions tier 4 and workshop version which when thrown will land and fire a flare that calls the dropship to that location which of course you can use immediately and upload or leave it there you can use multiple dropship beacons or grenades per session and it will move your dropship wherever you throw it but they're one-time use so use them carefully just like with other dropships in the current gameplay be careful where you throw the grenade because dropships don't take kindly because dropships don't take kindly to bases or prospectors that might be in their landing zone so the newest workshop item that we can get is the Cenotai Dropship Recall Beacon. And it was researched for 250 exotics, but it's only crafted for 25 Ren. It does take up one slot in your dropship, and these are not stackable. This is the workshop variant. So in our tier four this week, we have the new composite dropship recall beacon. This is the crafted tier four version of the dropship recall beacon. And it's crafted for three composites, two electronics, four steel screws, four iron ingots, and two gunpowder. Crafted at the fabricator. This is my old outpost turned open world. My dropship is right there. And we're going to go ahead and call our dropship with our composite dropship recall beacon. And I'll show you the other one as well. It works the same way. So we're going to just left click, hold, and throw. As you can see, a flare will go up. My old dropship will actually upload and disappear. Wow, that just completely failed. And also, if you throw one in a cave, it does nothing. It'll just sit there and decay. And you can pick it back up and throw it again. So it'll do that if you can't drop a drop out there. So as you can see, our dropship is over here. We're going to go ahead and throw this bad boy down and show you how it works. So we're going to hold left click and throw. 
This is, of course... There goes my old dropship. Or, there goes my dropship. Here it is. And now you can get your dropship and upload or do whatever you want to do. So this week we also got some data decentralization fix ups, which is their first wave of fixes for the data decentralization patch. They fixed an item duplication bug that was happening while in the station and fixed the extraction mission, which was broken. Exotics were correctly no longer able to be placed in your dropship. However, they did add a UI that reflects this now and it states that you'll need an orbital exchange interface. So, because orbital exchange interfaces are the only way that you can upload exotics now, guys. Exotic ores. We're not talking about exotics from missions. Those are automatically rewarded to you after the completion of the mission. We're talking about ores that you find, like nodes. Or extracting nodes. Workshop items now also specify who's the owner of the item in the tooltip. Which is awesome, because now you can distinguish whose item is whose. And that's only on new items, not the ones you brought down already and some weather session issues. They also announced this week the dedicated servers partners. These are the verified partners that's gonna be running dedicated servers for Icarus. We have Netrado, G Portal, Survival Servers, and Streamline Servers, which is our host. As we mentioned before, guys, we will have two servers coming out about a week after dedicated servers come out. For real, all four providers are already offering services and once internally approved, they'll move this offering out of beta. If you want some information on our dedicated servers, we've already got a link in our community discord. Link is in the description down below to our discord. And then there is a text channel there with dedicated servers on it. Check that out. And we got the change log V1.2.29.105. In the new content this week, they added a beeping sound for the tech device when thrown, that's the beacon, and also added a small beep sound for location awareness for dead players. We're going to check this out real quick. No, I don't hear you, actually. Apparently we tried to down each other, didn't hear a beeping sound, so I asked Discord, we'll see if they give us an answer. And in the fix section this week, they did update the cave lights to work properly with revisit default settings. It makes it look a little bit better in caves. And they optimized some caves by removing lights that there was no hole for in the roof. Exotics can no longer be placed in the dropship, but workshop items can be. And they also updated the dropship UI text to let people know about that and to place them in the orbital exchange interface. They also update payday and deep vein missions to use orbital delivery interface and added common use steps for exotics extraction. Also shoveling snow now grants a variable increased amount of ice. And in the future content this week, looks like they may have optimized the geyser eruption Niagara effect. Looks like they made some changes to the needler and its voice animations and sounds. And looks like they added a bunch of attack sounds for the striker. A whoosh, slam, heavy slam, claws out, etc. Added obsidian armor materials. They also fixed rocket spawn points not being released when their earning player leaves by dropship. They did mention fishing. It looks like tidy up of fishing BP logic. Tweaks the cable component to make it less bouncy. And they have a woolly zebra carcass and respectable textures and fur. Looks like they may have added some server commands here. Here they again said that they added beeping and static comms for dead prospectors. But we also wanted to show you dedicated servers. So whenever you go to join 
and you go over from peer-to-peer servers to dedicated servers. Under dedicated servers, you'll see they now have links to all the game servers that are verified server providers. And if you click on the link for that server provider, it'll pop up the server provider and how much is going to be. So for ours, it's going to be 750 it looks like per server. So we're going to have two starting out and eight player slots per server. So about 750 per server for dedicated servers for streamline. It looks like for survival servers, it's about 1120 one time and paid monthly. And the Rado is about saying 1229. Looks like you can have a four slot server for 550 through G portal. And then you also have an eight slot server for 1117. So of course those all vary and can change at any time. And that was this section right here. Added four verified server providers to dedicated screen. Clicking on the server providers logo will open their website. That's all I see for this change log. And that's it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you like what you see to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And we're almost there guys. Thank you so much for your subscriptions for your support and for watching the videos and hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.